this mini museum, the focus is about state terror. It's about how states use official forms of violence. Well, the original idea is, is the monster that is history. That's the title of the book. And what is this monster? This is what you have to decide. Monsters can be like um, Godzilla or King Kong. That's an obvious monster. But other monsters are uh, disease, war, violence. This mini museum is focusing on more literal forms of violence, not so symbolic. So by literal, it's disease, uh, war, um, treason, going against your country, being killed by your country, execution. My own interests are in violence and war because these are the issues that make our society run. A society is all based on a form of violence. And one piece is called the Taiwan WMD. That focuses on Taiwan's history of making weapons of mass destruction. So that includes the nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons. So in that sense, this exhibit, Taiwan WMD, is literally the monster that is history. But who is Taiwan's biggest enemy? It's China. How do you fight China? You can't. You're going to, Taiwan's going to lose. Everyone knows that. So you have to use unconventional weapons. Nuclear is no longer an option. So it's biological and chemical weapons. And it's not surprising to me that Taiwan has a huge stockpile of chemical weapons and some of the best labs in the whole world to create biological weapons. How the government took your tax money and they bought this stuff to make weapons. It's crazy. The Korean one by Kelvin Park, uh, his work is an installation of American Army Base in South Korea. The WMD exhibit, this fits in that this base in Korea used to have nuclear weapons and chemical and biological weapons. But South Korea has since given up uh, WMD altogether because they're part of the UN and they signed the treaty to give up these weapons. This Korean piece in the WMD shows that as well. In the realm of weapons of mass destruction, Taiwan is still way behind. Taiwan is still harboring, making, and stockpiling all these weapons, except for nuclear. And then Tony Wu, his work is about objects that have captured history. So he will present some, a camera and some film that was used by the Kuomintang when they were fighting on Jingmen Island against the Chinese. But this battle was important because it showed the Chinese they have to make a, a nuclear bomb. That's how Tony's work fits into this timeline of WMD. Uh, one documentary is called The Mineral Geology of Genocide. Mm -hmm. And that was shot by Europeans in Guatemala. And they were trying to exterminate the natives, Ranzuming, right? Most countries try to exterminate Ranzuming. And um, there's no history of this. There's no record of this. So this documentary is about digging up these bones and finding out how they were killed, how many were killed, and um, where they were killed. And this documentary is, all it is is political apologies. When a country does something terrible and they have to give an apology. Easy example is Germany apologizing for the Holocaust. But there's also Japan has apologized many times for the war. These clips are just supposed to show that after a crime has been committed, a state, a government, can issue an apology. And that's supposed to be the sort of the beginning of a new future, a beginning of reconciliation, forgiveness. I think it's a symbolic, artificial political act. And that's sort of the aim of this documentary. Report of G is referenced in the Taiwan WMD because it's when, when the Japanese surrendered, they left their biological warfare laboratories. So the biggest one was in China, Unit 731. This is a right? That's the most, the biggest. But here in Taipei, it's Unit 31. And um, when the Kuomintang came, they inherited it. So, but from what I understand, the Kuomintang only got leftover chemical weapons and documents how to make biological weapons. 
So because the Japanese left that here, it gave the Kuomintang here and then the Gongsandang in China a head start to start their own programs to make these weapons. So that's how Report of G sort of fits into the WMD. Glanders is originally a horse disease that would appear on horses' legs. And it was first used by the Germans in World War I. They weaponized it because when they fought in World War I, they still used horses. But the Japanese scientists worked on it and they used it to attack people. So, for example, even now in China, there are a couple of hundred people who are still living with these uh, open wounds on their legs. It's from the Japanese. So this exhibit is showing their data in some of their experiments. The, the traders are just these dolls, 12-inch dolls, and each one is a historical figure uh, who's a traitor. Treason is a form of violence, and then the way that the state deals with traitors is usually in the most extreme way, right? Execution. So most of these traitors were killed. And that's, to be killed by the state is pretty much the ultimate product of state power, is murder. It's just it's sort of an interesting, absurd presentation of uh, traitors, because traitors are usually seen as, uh, they say, larger than life, right? Or very exciting. And then these are small little dolls. Jie Her exhibit is about how the Chinese government and Chinese photographers altered the way they took pictures of that time to revise the history, to falsify history. And she shows through pictures how the pictures are fake, how the pictures were faking what was going on. But the pictures are supposed to be capturing reality. But really, it's presenting a fiction. How can art motivate, motivate people to do something? This is a very difficult question. This is, in fact, I think, the question that everyone asks and how are we supposed to do that? I tend to believe in direct action. I tend to think that the only way to deal with violence is through other forms of violence. That's the only thing that people listen to.